today we'll talk about a very important topic, which is enums in Rust. What are enums? Enums are a concept that are also used in many different programming languages, but of course today we'll focus uh, about enums in Rust. We'll make some examples, two or three examples, and at the end we also see how Rust handles the null value. Enums are a way to define a type by enumerating different variants. And of course, they can have different types. They can also contain some data. Let's see an example with IP addresses. There are basically two types of ways to identify an IP. There is the IP version 4 and, and the IP version 6. We call it IP address kind, which stands for address kind, and we have version 4 and version 6. We can have this main function, and then we can print this with 4 and 6. It's a good idea to have this derive debug line. And we have here, you see at the top, 4 version 5 and 6 version 6. Check the line 16. We used this uh, when we did the associated functions for methods in structs. Okay? When we have a function that has not the self in the method signature, that's called associated function for struct. It's a similar concept associated with enums. If we want to create an instance of this IP add kind of type before, this is the name of the enum and this is the type, the specific variant of this enum. We can also have an external function, for example, route that prints the type and then we can have something like this, route 4 and route 6. And this is interesting. Check this the signature of this route function. It has as an argument an IP type which is not v4 or v6 but it's IP other kind. This function can be used both with a version 4 and a version 6 because we want to express the concept of an IP. Super useful. I want to connect this v4 or v6 with an actual IP. How can I do this? Let's implement this with structs. So let's create a struct like this struct i think this is correct yes struct ip address that has a kind of ip other kind and an address as a string a struct can have many types and one type can be an enum spoiler also an enum can can have a struct we can create an instance of the struct and we can have something like this let home which is an ip address with a kind and an address and the address can be one two seven zero zero one we can print it and then we can have a loopback instance with an ip address of kind for example ip address kind b6 that returns this string and then we can print it okay this is an implementation with structs let's try it out you can check here that we can print the ip address of v4 and the ip address of v6 we are using a struct with a kind enum and an address as a string it's correct it's working but maybe we can do something uh, that improves this code read the line 6 enums can contain data let's remove this struct let's remove this part instead of having just v4 and v6 let's add some types here in parentheses when we declare the enums in the function main we can create the instance directly using the enums that i think that can be convenient in this way and we can print it like this and we can have this instance of this loop back and we print it. Here we define some types when we define the type of the enum. They don't have to be all the same. They can also have different types depending on the type of the enum. For example, let's say that for the IPv4, instead of having a string, I want to have the four uh, parameters of this uh, 
mask IP. So instead of having a string, for example, here I can have four numbers like this. U8, 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 and U8. So we can remove this line 17. And we can have a similar version, but with this uh, signature, like this. So we have numbers, four numbers now, instead of having a string. Let's see if this does work. Okay, and as you can see here at the bottom, it still works. Let's see a second example. In this case, we'll start with the implementation with structs, and then we'll see the implementation with enhance. So let's see that we want to implement a simple system based on messages. Let's say that we create a struct for this different type of messages. So let's say that we have a quit message, a message to basically quit the, the program. We can have a struct to move something, to write something, and to change the color. Okay, so like four simple options. And let's say that we want to send messages that do different uh, operations. I want to add this derive debug on all the structs so we can actually print them. Okay. And then we can create uh, instances of each uh, struct. For example, we can create this queue, a quit message, a move message, a write message. We see we are using different types here. We are we have four different structs, but they are all messages but that's our logic the structs they don't they don't know this we we called them like message 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 and let's say that we want to print all these instances print q m w and c let's try it out check it here at the bottom we have quit message move message write message and change color. So we have these four instances. Let's say that I want to implement some methods, some functions for each of these structs. But since this is a message based program, I want having for all the struct a function that is like call for each of them. Now I can't have a single implementation for multiple structs. We can have something like this, implant then the name of the struct, and we can have a function that prints the instance itself. Something like this. This is the implementation for the quit message. Then we can have the implementation for the move message. Basically, we are just printing the name of this struct, but this of course is just an example. The code inside here is the same, but of course we'll print different things. And here, implement change color. So we created four different implementations to print the instance itself, okay? And here we can actually call these methods. So we can have q.call, m.call, w.call, and c.call, cargoran-q, here at the top, we're basically calling this method. Look how much code we had to write. We had to write four different structs, four different implementations, one for each struct that prints the name of the, the struct, basically, and then we created the instance, and then we called the method. Let's refactor all this code with enums. Let's delete everything implementation with enums. And let's see if this is different. Enum messages. And this is a, probably exactly what we wanted. We want a message for this system, this CLI, this, this small game, can be a quit, a move, a write, or a change color. Now, let's create these instances. This. In this case, we are creating instances of an enum. We can have here always the derived debug line or line 9 to actually print this enum instance, cargo run dash q. And here at the top, we have a similar behavior. But instead of having four structs, we have a single enum with all the different variants. And now something which is very cool, we have methods for structs, but we also have methods for enums. Implement message function call self on any of this type, and then here we can do print ln 
self. We can call these four enums. One, two, three, and four. Cargo run dash q. And as you can see, we have a similar behavior. We just wrote a single enum with four types here. We created these four instances, and then we created a method for this generic enum with this function called call that, that can be called on any instance of the enum. And then we can call these um, instances just like this. Now I want to tell you something. In Rust, there is no null value. And this shocked me the first time that I read this. In Rust, there is no null. Instead, we have option enum. This is why I'm talking about option in the enum lesson. In Rust, there is no this null value. And instead, we have this uh, option. And uh, this, uh, I think it's a huge, huge difference. Because uh, we need the concept of null. A classic example is this. If we want to access an array at a specific index and there is not that index, we should throw an error in some ways. We know that that value is not available. The problem is that we need the concept of null, but having the null value can lead to more problems. A classic problem is when we want to do operations with something which is actually null, I don't know, sum or divide or doing any other operation with something which is actually a null value. I want to show you how this option enum is implemented in Rust. It's something that looks like this. Enum, option, sum and none. We have this t which is for the generic type. So this can be any type we will have a specific lesson about the generics. For now, think that this T can be integers, unsigned, uh, strings, uh, structs, uh, whatever. And known is this concept, but it's not the null value. Is subtype, I would say, of this enum option. And we'll see how this can be very tricky to use. We'll see an example. Before this example, I want to comment this because I don't want to override the default option. We can have let sum underscore number like this. This is a bit unusual, but of course we are doing an example of the option here. Instead of typing let sum number equal five, we do let sum number equal sum five, and we can have let sum string sum a string. And we can also have let absent number option i32. And let's try to print them all. In this case, we don't need the derive uh, debug trait, cargo run dash q. And we see here at the top right, sum 5, sum a string, and none. So this is how also the compiler thinks when we try to pass some values. Now I want to show you something very interesting. Let x colon i8 and we can assign the value 5 and then we can have let y colon option i8 sum 4 here and then let's try to sum them like this. Let's try. Bam. Error. No implementation for i8 plus option i8. This is not JavaScript. It's uh, the compiler is not forcing coercing types or trying to do crazy stuff or when we do like an equal equal. This is intentional for this reason. When we have i8, we are sure that there will be a value. When we use option, in this case, we, we declare this in a, in a bit tricky way. The compiler, even if we assign to this option the sum for value, it's still not sure and it doesn't automatically tries to unwrap this or, or just let's say pick the value inside option. This is a, a very important. So it's not done automatically. If we want to extract the value inside an option, of course, sum on why we can do dot unwrap. Let's try. And now it works. Is a method that returns the value inside the option if it is sum t. 
T is a generic, so it's not specific to integers. Unwrap is to get the value inside the option. You see, option sum, instead we, in this case, we have this option sum for give me the value inside the four. Let me wrap up. <laughs> in general, we need to use this option T if you want to have the code to be handled in for each possible variance. There is also this documentation if you want to know more about the option. The next episode will be dedicated to the match statement.